All right, James. Um, what did you think of the pod with uh, Mushfiq? Oh, it's always good talking to Mushfiq. I guess he could, he's one of the OGs, right, in, in the niche website space, I guess, online. But, I mean, we cover all sorts of different stuff with what he's been up to because he hasn't been too active online. So things with his affiliate business or his affiliate websites, niche websites, his journey into e-commerce as well. And then we dive into his own brand website, Flip2, which is actually quite cool and just seeing you know what he's up to and getting an update. Yeah, it was fun uh, hearing him enter the uh, e-commerce space. Um, that was very fun to hear about. Uh, he g- feels all the pain I feel. Um, but yeah, I think it was, <laughs> it's always good to speak with him. But yeah, that's why you, you know, put me um, off e-commerce. I don't think I don't know if I want yeah. to get in there after after you're always talking about it. No, it's a lot of pain, but the rewards are half pretty decent pretty decent you're you're able to scale well especially in your niche um especially if you go into supplements it's a good mm. niche to be in but yeah yeah but we also talked about um i guess ai content as well which kind of brings us to our, our sponsor today is, is work allo and i'm on mashvik's side with all of this with not using ai content i don't think it's good enough i don't think you're getting the experience onto the page. I mean, you can prompt it to give it to you, but it's just not the same as coming from from your voice. And if you want to bring that experience into your content, you need to hire writers with experience. And obviously Work Allo is going to streamline that for you. And it's going to streamline that for you because you're going to be able to interview a whole host of applicants easily, streamlined, and quickly. Whereas if you're doing it on your own manually, you're literally reaching out to maybe five, six writers and then only testing those versus testing hundreds at a time. And it's just going to help you build your writing, I guess your writer's base that can uh, write content for your site. But I think Jackie, there's something down in the description for everyone who's looking to get uh, a work or get on work Allo. Yeah. Um, guys hit up the coupon code indexy, um, get some free credits, I think. And yeah, I've been using Workello personally. It's been great, man. A uh, good way to filter through a lot of noise, especially if, we're, if you're using like onlinejobs.ph. Um, their platform's clunky as hell. Um, I think this is the by far the easiest way to go through uh, hiring. But yeah, uh, yeah, it was a good pod. Did you use it, did you um, use it for to video guys. to hire? Um, did you use it to hire video editors Sorry. too? Yeah, I did. Video editors, technical writers, general VAs, it does it all. I think I'm actually a, you know, at first they were just an advertiser and I was like, you know, we'll, we'll speak well about them. I'll try out the tool, but I'm, I'm actually a believer now. It's uh, mostly because of how bad <laughs> onlinejobs.ph their like whole system is. Um, we're, we're kind of super streamlined. It's like they've, they've done it like hundreds of times before. You can use it for anything, hiring anything, um, hiring anyone. You just... Post on a job board, throw in the link. Post on Facebook, throw in the link, and then they'll. You can filter through all the, the noise. I'm a believer, so uh, sign up to work hello and give the pod a listen, okay. guys. I think this will, this is going to be a good one. I think you guys will like it a lot. What's good, everyone? It's Jackie Chow, and this is James Delacy, and you're listening to this week in digital marketing. All right, welcome to This Week in Digital Marketing. My name is Jackie Chow. Uh, my co-host is James Delacy, and we have uh, Mushfiq from the website flip.com here today. How's it going, Mushfiq? Good, good. Thanks, guys, for having me. Yeah, um, you're a fr- friend of a pod, fr- friend of the pod. Uh, for those who th- that don't know you already, you want to give a quick intro, though you've done it before. Yeah, um... Yeah, my name is Mushfiq. I run a website called the website flip.com. It's a newsletter for buying, selling content sites. Um, since 2008, I've been buying, selling and flipping sites um, over probably 230 now, 230 flips. And yeah, that's what I do. Sir, Yo, what do you think of uh, the recent AI developments? How do you feel about it? Bullish, bearish, neutral? Yeah, um, well, um, neutral for sure. Uh, um, I use AI for day-to-day things, right? For marketing copy, Facebook posts, you know, emails. Um, but I don't use it for content for my sites yet. Um, 
or probably will never do that. I don't know. Um, I just don't believe in it that much. Um, but yeah, no, I, 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 I'm not active on all the social medias, right? People are going crazy. Our niche site community is, I feel like we just jump on the next bandwagon and then, <laughs> and then, um, you know, whatever is the next thing, we just move on to it. So yeah, it's interesting for sure. Are you changing any of your processes because of the uh, upcoming stuff or are you just business as usual? So I made, I made a tweet or post on this stuff. Um, I, I don't follow trends. Um, I just do my thing, let others figure out like Jackie <laughs> and, you know, go through all the hiccups and then I, I'll, I'll make changes. That could be me like one year or two down the road. Yeah, I'll probably lose out on a lot of opportunity, um, but I'm okay with that. Steady, steady for me. And then I'll figure out whoever figures it out, you know, you, Jackie, you know, the internet. Um, I just follow that um, after a few years. Yeah. What about you, James? Like, what, how do you feel? I, I realize I've never asked you that. And like, do you use it um, right now? Um, the, the AI stuff? <clears throat> yeah, I'll use AI for mm. like headlines and things like that. I won't use... I won't use it to write my content. It just doesn't get my writing style or what I want to get across to the reader for it. So I don't use it for that, but <clears throat> regarding like the AI search and stuff like that, man, I'm, I'm all good. I'm happy with that. Cause I'm going to, I'm just going hard building the YouTube stuff, kind of expanding horizontally. I've got some ideas of growing like multiple YouTube channels under the same brand or covering like different things, just continue building the sites just have a portfolio of sites like those big ass media companies that own like the whole cert for certain keywords. <laughs> That's the plan. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. We're just going to well, ask um, you, Jackie, what are you doing? What are you yeah, doing with I, AI? Um, he's doing everything with AI. He's just spamming. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I, I, I do the pure spam as well as I use it to write <laughs> tweets, some tweets, so that's why if you guys see any mistakes, that's from uh, ChatGPT, and I just don't proofread it. And also, um, yeah, I also use it to test, find like mine some keywords on like low competitive, like zero search keywords. Um, you find a lot of those actually. So those are good. Mm -hmm. uh, besides that, um, use it to build out PVNs as well. Um, yes, it's st that's still working, but it's because um, when you test with uh, these when you find these zero search keywords, you're not using your main site, right? So you're using PBNs or like weak sites in your network. And then once they rank, you get some traffic, you can use those sites as uh, like link farms for your own assets, uh, yada, yada. Um, so those work well. And besides that, I think that's about it. But man, you know, Mush Mushvik, yeah. I want to talk about you, man. Dude, what have you, you been up to? It feels like you fell off the face of the planet. You're not on Twitter anymore. All your like Facebook posts are like automated. What the fuck's going on, man, dude? I miss you. How's it going? Yeah, so on the Facebook posts. Yeah, I, I Facebook groups has really been improving. Um, at least Facebook, like they've been launching a lot of features. Now they allow recurring automated posts. So, you know, you'll see a few of those. It's like a weekly checkup, a check in or something, like what a Q and A with me or hey, share some wins, you know. Those are yeah, apart from that. Um, I randomly post, I don't, I don't use AI for Facebook. Um, I use AI for sometimes Twitter. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I've been kind of quiet. Uh, one reason is on Twitter, I've been very active in the past, but recently I've seen, I'm not getting any engagement, so it's useless. <laughs> um, so, and that's maybe because I stopped posting, but it's just, it's just a hassle now. Um, and. But yeah, no, my, what I did about two months ago, my wife wanted to quit her job. So we found a e-commerce business for her. So I've been like, like April 1st was closing. And for all of April, I was just like, like in the weeds, man, it's a whole different world. It's, it's crazy. Um, so many things, um, but yeah, now it's all, <laughs> but, but I'll be honest, it's, it's rewarding. I, 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 I like to touch the physical product. It's, it's pretty cool. Um, it's different. Never had that, that feeling before. So, um, and she likes it. So she's happy and that's all that matters. And now, you know, it's kind of stabilized now, end of May coming up. So I'm getting back into it. What's next? So, yeah. 
Nice, nice. Can you talk more about the e-commerce business? Is it like an FBA business? Is it just D to C? What's your traffic sources? Is it's, it Google Ads, organic? Like, what's yeah. the what's the? Situation? Yeah, I don't want to. Re- I don't want to reveal it because it's not. It's not my business to reveal. Um, but um, it's D two C. It's FBA. It's Walmart. It's Etsy. It's wholesale. It's everything. Um, it's probably. The, one of the best e-commerce business I found for sale and I got it on Flippa. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's a good mix of everything um, and a large SKU count. So there's a lot of different SKUs of different products with like 50% people coming back to the site to keep purchasing. Um, and so it's, it's and a subscription products as well. So it's a good mix of everything. Um, we, we like it a lot. It's in the uh, hobby niche. So DIY, arts and crafts mm. niche so it does well nice man good to hear how's um your wife's liking everything like she's going through the process learning everything is she like a yeah. technically sure. savvy person yeah sorry um i wouldn't say no no she's not um I mean, she knows the basics but i handle all the tech side so i'm doing the seo um we have a facebook um ad person hired a Google ad person hired, um, uh, one or two VAs. So I manage that she handles all the logistics, all the customer support, all the ideas and all of that stuff. And I, we have an engineer that designs the products out of Indonesia and we just coordinate with them. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah. Um, she does all the heavy lifting work that I, that, that makes e-commerce suck, Annoying. um, which is good. And I can just do the growth nice man um like how like what level is it at is it in the like the five figure range already or is it um just starting out no it's it's 2022 and made seven figures um oh fuck. so a million a million <laughs> i wouldn't seven figures a big range so a million um in 2023 we're going to take a little hit because um we are count. We are optimizing it. They were really the previous owners were really trying to grow, 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 and they just really didn't make it a lifestyle friendly business. Um, so we are count, uh, you know, decreasing the number of SKUs, figuring out what makes sense. We work the least amount of money but make more profit. Um, so it'll probably be um, mid six figures, six five hundred to seven fifty of this year. I think we'll still take a, but we'll profit more than they did. So that's what's more important. Are you holding inventory yeah, that... or are you drop shipping it? We are holding inventory. Yep. Right. Fucking nasty, dude. Yep. It's our own worst my worst enemy. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. It's our own product. It's our own design. It's not a private label. It's custom made. So, um, yeah, yeah. We'll see. In the future, we might, you know, outsource it. But right now, we have we want full control. Yeah, that's good. Yo, um, I think I mentioned this in the past. I'm not sure if you guys are doing this or if you're already ranked. But these, um, the Amazon listings, you have to try to rank for it on Google. Have, have you done that yet? It's just crazy out here, man. It's like the easiest thing to rank on Google is an Amazon listing. Yeah. It's like if Parasite SEO yeah. and just pound that shit with things and it's over. It's over. Um, yeah, yeah, so you just easy. SEO optimize the listing, right? Yeah, and it's so easy. It takes like two weeks or something like that. Um, yeah, try yeah. it out, try it yeah, out. Yeah, the thing here... The thing with mine is we are already number one for all the major keywords for my Damn. D2C side. I don't want the FBA side to do that. Yeah, yeah, um, we sure. actually have that margins on D2C. Um, so FBA, we have like an agency handling it. And I told them like, look, you know, your job is to get me ad, um, revenue from advertising. So that's what they're focusing on. And obviously, naturally, some of the keywords will rank, but I don't want to uh, what is that word called? Um, where you cannibalize? You cannibalize. Yeah, exactly. Mm. So yeah, but for other situations, I'm hundred percent. You know that makes sense. Um, like if you're in protein yeah. powder niche, you you better try your Amazon um, optimizer. Yeah. yeah. But hear me out, Mushfiq. Imagine you're you're okay. already number one for your DDC brand. Yes. And then number two is your Amazon listing. Number three is your Etsy listing. Number four is yeah, your yeah, yeah, yeah. listing. What are we, what are we 100%. saying here? Are, we, are you saying no to that? Like, obviously not. No, I'm not, no, I'm not saying no to that. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to work. 
yeah, 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 hundred percent. No, I'll do that. I'll do that. That's cool. <laughs> Sick. For sure. Sounds cool. So, how, how um and how your like how your other business is doing? I saw your tweet about um these uh fuckhead brands like <laughs> dropping affiliates on you, uh their affiliate percentage on you. What the hell's up with that? Yeah, man, it's 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 so dumb. So it's in the um yeah, I don't think I want to say the niche, but it's a niche I've been in for since 2017. Um, I have two sites in the niche. Um, and these idiots, I mean, I like them because, you know, they, they've been pretty consistent with me. For one of the sites, they kept my CPA high. And for this new site that I'm actually in, I'm actually listed on Empire Flippers. They come back to me today, yesterday and say, or Sunday and say, ah, we're not profitable. Um, so we have to drop it from 60, which it was, it was to 40 CPA. So for those who don't know a CPA in the audience, you know, you, um, you know, you get a one-time payment for a customer you bring to them. Um, and so that's like a 30% cut right overnight. And I, and I always, and it wasn't selling on empire flipper. It's been listed for like three months. Um, Whoa. and so now it's even worse, right? Because I'm going to have to reduce the multiple or not the multiple the uh revenue adjusted so it's not worth it anymore so i thought okay uh let's take it off the market um and surprisingly their competitors have all, all in the past have offered me 65 cpa i have denied it I, I have it set up which it's a secondary um affiliate so like some of the sales go to them but not the primary 95 percent plus go to this one brand and the Competitors have offered me 65. I just told them, okay, you know, why should I take the risk? It's working with this first brand. Um, and now I just told them via email, the first brand that, Hey guys, look, you know, I have a $65 CPA here, right? So I'm going to just sh shift all the traffic there. They're like, yeah, there's nothing we can do. So they're really, I oh, think wow. they really are in profit. So yeah, I, I'm not, I'm not going to lose. I'm, it's going to take some time to come get back to it, but I'm hoping the conversion rates from the second brand, which is actually a bigger brand. Um, works out. Um, I just never did the switch because I don't want to take the risk, right? I have 5% conversion rates. If I switch it over and I do it for a month or two on the flipping side of things, my average income would come lower, right? And I can't explain that to a potential buyer that, Hey, I made an ex I did an experiment. It didn't work out. I have to wait to get that average back up. So yeah, it, it, when you're a website flipper, things suck. You have to think on month to month levels. Whereas when you're a brand builder, you can take these risks and you know, work it out over time. So, yeah, James, have you ever had that issue? But I, I think you, you lagged out there, Jackie. Yeah, no. Have you ever had that issue similar to Mushfiq, like a drop in uh, commissions? Uh, not so much commission rate, but I've right now I've got a problem with the company that affiliate tracking is not working properly. So, so I can't see any conversions in my dashboard and they just like, they see it in the background. So they kind of pay it through each month and they're trying to fix it. But man, like ever since, ever since they got rid of coupon codes, because coupon codes were getting wrecked by all the coupon sites. Mm -hmm. So they were like trying to figure out all the attribution. Mm -hmm. Actually, I'm waiting for another company to do the same. They're getting wrecked by coupon sites. So they're trying to figure out the actual attribution as well. And they're just waiting to get paid from those. And then everything else is in the background, which is a bit of a pain. Yeah. Yeah. No, man, these affiliate yeah. companies are too dumb. This is, this is the second time. Um, the first, the other one happened in 2020 in the outdoor niche. One brand, I was making about 10% of my revenues for that site. So about $1,500, $2,000 or something recurring. And then all of a sudden they shut their whole <laughs> network down. And That's I crazy. was in the process of selling them too. So I had to hold it another six months to kind of try to get it back up. So it it's... You know, there's a debate, display ads versus affiliate. There's pros and cons to both. No, none of them are winners. Display ads slowly can die down and have that cyclical, but affiliate can just go to zero, right? So there's always um, uh, pros and cons to both. Yeah, man. That's why I, uh, I stick with this Amazon thing and uh, glad I have the custom card. I hope I never lose it. Yeah, I'd be so messed up if I lose it. Man. Yeah. yeah. You better, yeah, you better I, audit each site that your, you know, partner, I know, I know you told me. Yeah, they break the rules and then get you banned. 
Yeah, you gotta you gotta audit every single site of this person you're working with and make sure it's legit. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, to tell the audience, I, I don't know if I went public with this, but I guess I have now. But um, what I did was I partnered up with uh, like another major brand in the space, um, in the homeware niche. So they, I think, what's the public rate? Like two percent? I think home home niche on Amazon associates they get two percent um i have a custom rate card that gives eight percent so i partnered up with this person um so they go from like 20k a month to like i think like 80k a month and i just keep the 20k or i think i think i keep the 20 percent 20 percent of 80k um nice, and that's just like my that's so gross. it's like a no-brainer i think literally everyone wins here so it's a dream come true <laughs> yeah right yeah. just uh I, I think like i would call that true passive income um and then, yeah 100%. yeah um but so what i've been would trying it, to go a out and find card cost you if you're acquiring a site like if it comes with a custom rate card is that going to bump the multiple massively oh I, I don't know mushri do you see many of them for sale i don't see any right now uh, at least on the market no, not none, none, Pretty none. I, I i had one person last year i would say come up to me and say there's a site eight site eight or seven site portfolio with the custom rate card it didn't sell um, because the buyer on the other end is thinking, potentially thinking that what if this custom rate card is just a temporary thing, right? And then all of a sudden you get bumped down. Google, Amazon can do that anytime, right? And so it's a high risk to the buyer. So all buyers are valuing it with the traditional commission rates and saying this is just a cherry on top. It happens, it's, it stays for how long, who knows, right? So yeah. And I know, Jackie, you tried to sell the custom rate card portfolio um, as well. And I don't think it sold, right? It, it, nobody, no buyers, uh, no takers. Dude, if I that. sold, I would have like made off like a bandit. Some of the sites got completely destroyed. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But I, yeah. yeah, it's fine, it's fine. I, th I think I listed at like 1.x million um, for the yeah, whole yeah. package. And then I think some of the sites went down to like near zero, like a couple, couple grand a month. So um I guess in a way, I'm glad yeah, I didn't so, sell it. So you I know what I would. Life. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that would be that would be bad, you know. But the brand that you're working with, <clears throat> um, I assume long term they'll probably want to take over the the Amazon account, um, in a way, right? Because I don't know what their long term goal is if they want to exit, um, right? Mm. Dude, my pitch for them was. You want to bring this to market? Let's go together. You know, just like let's just bundle this. Oh, see, so I'll, the, I'll, I'll just keep the twenty percent. You know, yeah. Zero, I, I, bring <laughs> up, I bring zero. I bring nothing to the table except for the Amazon uh, custom rate card, and then we'll just exit all together. You know, I think that's a pretty yeah. good idea. Wait, Imagine so, going wait, from so twenty k right to eighty k a month. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Twenty percent of the upside of the exit price. That's great. You know, Wait, so you, you'll sell you'll sell the rate card with that site thing. Is what is that what you're saying? He has to. Yeah, yeah. but then yeah, yeah, yeah. But then I, I do nothing. You know, the rate card is worth something, but it's not worth more than I don't know, like a million, right? It's I don't yeah. know. If, but, then, but then you sabotage I, I, yeah. your own niche sites, right? I would bundle it. I would sell them too. Oh, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. 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 Yeah. So like, of the 80K, it, sorry of the eighty k that you're making, how much is your own? Dude, mine is probably only like fucking like five five k right now. Okay, yeah, man. can't complain, that, man. Yeah. Can't complain. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. You could potentially get a million dollar exit if you bundle and they're okay with it, versus your probably two hundred thousand dollar value. Um, probably de declining sites as well in your portfolio, right? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I think yeah. it's a pretty good okay, synergy yeah. for whoever purchases it because uh my sites are all in the home niche and the large publisher is oh, also yeah. in the home niche so it's like i think it's like a pretty good pickup um Man, gear, gear up for that exit you gotta gear up for that exit get that brand on board to do a big exit that's <laughs> that would be because like i don't know how big this brand is let's I mean, if they're making 80k on amazon monthly i mean they're probably huge no, it, right? it, it, it was like 15 to 20k before um in like commissions right and right, I right. Ran the numbers. but that's, that's still big that's still yeah 
that's still big. And I'm sure they have other monetization as well. I mean, that not, their whole portfolio probably makes much more than that. I'm assuming they have other affiliates or display ads or something, right? Um, yeah. Yeah. Is it one and, uh, or no sites? He only attached two sites on it. I, I, I checked it. It's like a legit site. Um, I ran the numbers. It, it makes sense. Um, but I'm just surprised it does that much in revenue. Man. Yeah. Like affiliate is the way. Like I feel like display ads is so pathetic compared to affiliate. Affiliate, like, affiliate, hundred no percent. Even though, listen, even though I had that sixty bucks to forty dollar dip, it's still it's still better than display ads. I, I'm not a fan of display ads. Um, so I I've I, I have not really. I mean, I don't have any sites on Ezoic right now. I'm I'm done with that. If anything, it's Mediavine or an Ad Thrive, and still I have. 10 to one ratio of affiliate sites to display ad sites. I, I am not a fan. Um, right. do, do you not run display ads on your affiliate then at all? So the one that I was talking about, no, because my CPA is 60 bucks, I think, which, yeah. which nothing can compare um, to that. I have another site in the dating niche uh, that makes about 10 to 12 K and the app, the effective RPM. So they uh, affiliate all revenues included to calculate the RPM. It's 250 bucks. There's no display ads that can come close to that, right? And yeah. it's in the dating page. So, um, and then I have another, so I have a relationship site that I've been trying to sell. Um, market isn't that great right now. We could probably talk about that. Um, and that one gets 120,000 page views and makes $7 RPM on media buying. <laughs> I mean, if I put in some effort, I think, and it's in the relationship niche. So I think some, you know, affiliate would do really well. I just don't have the, mm interest to do that that's why i'm selling it for somebody else but that should make at least a hundred dollars rpm effective with affiliate mm -hmm. so yeah sure. look if you figure out the right offer with affiliate it's a no-brainer it's hard to yeah. figure that out that's the issue yeah Je but before carrying that conversation jackie how did you find your partner for that to partner up with the right card thing in your niche did you know the person beforehand do the guys slid into my dms i think found me on twitter man this is why you guys no gotta... way is this a famous person? Do we know who they are? Or are no, they like no, under the No, no, super under the radar. I didn't even like I I I didn't even give him the time of day until I like looked into his site one day. He's like, Hey, wanna partner up with your rate card? I was like, No, nah, who the hell are you? Like I, I searched <laughs> them on Google, nothing came up. I'm like, No, no chance, no chance. I'm not like I don't want to risk my rate card, right? And then right. like w some random day, I don't know, I think I was in a bad mood, you know. <laughs> it was raining outside. I decided to throw their site into Asia. So I was like, what the fuck? And it's, and it's not just like, oh, how do I fix my chair kind of keywords? It's like best sofas no, really. or some shit like that. You know, I'm like, oh my goodness. Uh, like, yeah, let's fucking go. Um, and here we are. <laughs> yeah. We have gone and, uh, it's, it's good, I guess. Um, oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. And, and I, I also have another deal in the workings. Also from Twitter, Mushfiq, you're 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 missing out, man. I, I'll, I'll tell I you know, offline. I know. I, I'll I'll tell you offline what the brand is. And you're gonna lose your mind. Sure. Let me give okay. you the stats right now. All right. Company right now doesn't make much money. Health niche, sessions per month, two point five million. Oh wow! Dude, I am brought on. I they pay zero per, zero dollars retainer. I think we only take like twenty. It's like a moving uh, lever, 20 to 50% of all revenues generated. Can if you grow it. it. No, just all revenues generated. I don't grow anything. I just turn on the, turn on the tap. Oh, right? this, oh this is for the uh, yeah. Amazon rate card. No, Wait, this what, is for what, the- where, um, What in the health niche? Like what session? Is, is, sorry. In, is it for SEO management? What, what are you doing? I'm not- yeah, yeah, sorry. So like think a health startup. Think like WebMD came up to you. Got it. Yeah. But then yeah. WebMD never made any money. They don't know how to yeah, make yeah. money online. So they're like, yeah. yo, um <laughs> oh my like, we have two and a half million sessions and, and like, you're gonna like, be able to they're not yeah, yeah, zero dollars a month. And then they're like, Yo, Jackie, uh help yeah. us out. No, and no. I'm like, I am gonna <laughs> monetize this to to the end, you know. We already have like, well we're done. in the works right now Well done. Uh, to write like affiliate content. Yeah. And we have like 8% commissions on Amazon for like vitamins and supplements. Um, James, don't worry. Oh it's like gosh. WebMD. Like think WebMD. Um, so yeah, yeah. 2.5 million yeah, a month. Insane. Dude, shit's over.
I, I did some rough calculations. I think it's about 150K a month just from display ads. Yeah. And then affiliate, I'm projecting yeah, yeah. like probably 50K a month in the beginning. Yeah, right, yeah. So they, they have no, no display ads, no affiliate, nothing. And they're getting 2.5 million a month traffic. And they yeah. probably have a strong in-house like writing team, right? Probably a big startup, right? Like 30, 50 people. That's exactly probably... the, that's exactly the, what is it called? Um, profile. And I think yeah, there's why, a why lot they of these. The company? I don't understand. Why they start the they, they, no, it's not, of course it's not a niche site. It's like yeah. a VC funded startup in the med tech okay. industry. This is, this is happening because of the current VC um, dry. I mean, there's no funding, right? They wouldn't have done this at all. Come to Jackie, if the good times were, mm, you know, okay, they yeah. were raising money. Now yeah, they're so. like, okay, we need to be profitable um, to, to get that burn, that burn, like that timeline so they can last longer until this down period kind of goes away very common but they're in a good shape they're going to make a lot of money and just be fine right um yeah. they probably invested they probably unknowingly invested in seo just by generating content right they, maybe they knew what they were doing but if they if they had a real seo expert on staff that person would have a monetization angle from day one right um which they probably didn't they just probably had like a very good writing team and put out a lot of content um without an end goal in mind. So yeah, no, good job, Jackie. Twitter, Twitter is the place. I got to get, get active. Again. Dude, you got to get back on there, man. Trust me. And also like, um, like to the SEOs defense, not all SEOs are like niche yeah. site people, right? They're in-house SEOs. They're, they're, and honestly, For they sure. did a great job to from zero to 2.5 million is like nothing to be scoffed at. You know, that's none of the niche site people can do that. Oh. Honestly, I don't think I've seen anyone do yeah. that. Um, um, not in that, not in that health niche. Yeah. So yeah. I think they, they did a great job. Just suck at monetizing. They went for, you know, I'm sure like a huge I don't know, Procter and Gamble, uh, exit, or they wanted to exit to like Pfizer or some yeah. shit like that, but they, it, it yeah. just didn't work yeah. out. And I think there's a yeah. lot of opportunities like that right now, man. Like in the startup niche, yeah. you can approach people with a lot of traffic or local businesses with, I don't know, like a lot of authority. And then partner up with yeah. them and monetize better. I think there's yeah. tons of opportunities out there right now. I don't know. Yeah, Mushri, like, for idea. example, didn't you, you used to work for a, a, like an energy company, like a solar company, I believe. Yeah, dude, imagine yeah, they think, went yeah. to solar affiliates. Like that shit's easy, right? Yeah, yeah. You can yeah. you can transition yeah, yeah. it like so, so, shit like that. I don't know. Um, yeah, I've been I've been thinking about that stuff. Not you know starting up a portfolio of sites um but yeah it's there's some big players in that niche it's it's tough <laughs> it's just like health yeah. i think it's it's really tough mm. um but yeah jackie that's that's cool that's cool that's that's amazing that's good stuff how how's your um newsletter coming because that's something you know you're you're killing it that's what that's what i want to say not really man this month's been this month's been pretty dead if i'm being honest um like we filled out a lot of slots in terms of like the uh, newsletter sponsorships last month. Um, but this month haven't been closing a lot. Well, I also haven't been reaching out much, but we have a sales team. Well, two person sales team right now. Um, so pretty much what I've been doing is like every dollar I generate, I put into growing the list and you mm -hmm. know uh, how I do it. It's just um, yeah, 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 Twitter, yeah. Facebook, Sparkloop, um, every dollar yeah. generated straight in. Um, and I think that's the only moat I believe that I have is that I'm able to just like put all money. the money in. Yeah. Hey, that's my moat. Look, that's good enough. I mean, you'll beat, you'll beat 90% of them, right? Uh, probably more. Um, but dude, there's like, like, okay. I, I'm, I'm confident I'll out money. Most of the, you know, Nisai people, um, most of the people in the industry, but they'll eventually catch up. Like it's like a timing thing. So like, what, what would you do if you were in my position? Do I just grow to a hundred K and then just exit that shit to, um, one of the major, I don't know, marketing companies, SAS or so on and so forth. Or what do you think? Yeah, the, challenge, um, the challenge with newsletters, I've been doing it. What for since 2020, right? So three years now, if you are in that flywheel of advertiser, subscriber, advertiser, subscriber, it sucks. It sucks um, because 
I have like right now, I don't have advertisers. I don't have a sales team like you. Um, but also in my space, it's so niche that I think I have already kind of, everybody has kind of had an ad in my newsletter, the one, the players that matter, right? So you're in a bigger and broader niche, but at a certain point, it's going to come to the, you know, you, first of all, you have an agency, an SEO agency, so you're not going to allow another SEO agency to advertise in your newsletter, right? Because that's conflict of interest, or at least that's what I do. I don't allow competitors, right? Um, at a certain point, advertisers are going to test it out and see some are going to get an ROI, some are not, but it's going to dry down over time. And then you're going to get to that page. Maybe that's 100K subscribers, and then it's done, right? So you got to figure out what that next step is, your own products or, you know, what what is the next? And that's something with newsletters that I haven't been able to figure out is, you know, I have my own products, I have advertisers, but at a certain point, I'm at my peak right now. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's good money, it's great, but I've hit that peak and there's nothing next, right? So mm -hmm. unless you are spinning up your own SaaS tools that are using your audience to do that, you're gonna come to that point, probably 100K and realize that it's a repetitive wheel where eventually no advertisers are coming back, let's say, um, worst case, and then you just have subscribers. What do you do? And if you don't have your own digital products, you know, how many people are going to use your agency? So you're going to come to that point where revenue is going to just stabilize, um, which, which is where I am at right now, and I'm confused, and I don't know what to do. Right? So um, that's, my, that's my guess. Newsletters are great uh, for that initial exponential growth. Um, where you're trying to make money and you will make money, but I don't see the long, long term game unless you own all the products. Um, vertical integration. Yeah, I think I agree to an extent, but how, how does like, you know, Milk Road, The Hustle, Morning Brew do it? You know, they're a full blown media they're so house, good. right? Uh, yeah, hundred percent. But like The Hustle, it's, it's, it's a, it's very generic. If you're, I, I, I'm talking maybe for more niche, right? So hustle is just marketing overall, right? There's unlimited um, mm. advertisers for that. I mean, even like supplement companies would want to target that audience because they want to target CEOs and, you know, whatever, right? There's so many different ways. So I guess it's me, what I'm saying for my audience, I can't get different advertisers, right? It's, it's hard. And yours is marketing. So I think you are kind of in that hustle. I think you'll be fine. Um, but I'm saying that there may come a time where you, you don't have the advertiser. Now, will the bigger brands work with you? Like, I don't know, the big, big ones, maybe, maybe not today, but maybe at a hundred K and you open up a new realm of different advertisers who want to target a bigger audience who are not, who are going to ignore you right now. When you know, you're probably what at 30 K now. Um, so yeah, no, I, I, I'm sorry. I, I, maybe I, I was just being too niche, but. Yeah, if you're more broad like yours, it might work out. Um, I just, I've, I don't, I don't have an example. Like I haven't seen someone like no, no, close to me do it. Um, I've no, only heard hustle four years ago, right? So <laughs> things are different now. Um, advertisers are being cheap too, so uh, it's it's a it's a weird time. Um, before I used to be able to charge fifteen hundred per newsletter, per newsletter, and now it's like seven fifty. <laughs> so it's and 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 fifteen hundred at lower subscriber count and seven fifty at a higher and more sophisticated subscriber count. So yeah, yeah, it it sucks. I think it's that a, game sucks. Yeah, yeah, it's like a supply and demand issue, right? There's so much supply right now. Like all our friends in the Nissan industry, I think James <laughs> DeLacy as well. Soon, you're you're hopping on that newsletter game. I think. Dude, Dude, I can't I think do another one. Like I've a... already got two brands that I'm sending <laughs> weekly stuff out for my brands. Yeah. I can't do another newsletter in a completely different niche and do Man, in the niche size space, in the niche size space, in 2020, January, when I started, it was only Spencer Hawes and John Dykstra. Those are the big Shows players. Those guys, those guys. And good for them, man. They they were doing good. And then I joined, and then like ten others joined over the last two years. And you're absolutely right. They've they've it's the same audience, right? Our yeah. niche site community is probably, I don't know, actively is probably more, but 50K. And these guys are just, um, you know, it's the same yeah, yeah. people in all the newsletters. And it's just, yeah. if the advertiser does it here, he knows it's my audience as well. And he's not going to do it in mine. So, um, yeah, it's saturation. 
Yeah, I think it's a saturation issue, and I think more specifically, the niche site space, like the TAM, is like is so small. So I think that's maybe your main issue. Yeah, I don't know. You could you could probably launch a new newsletter, similar space, um, and go broad, perhaps. I don't know. Um, mm. Or you can go like right. Spencer Hawes direction, you know, and go yeah. Uh, yeah. start start a ton of software companies. Those, those like are popping off for him. You know, I think he's doing well. Yeah. He's great at that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You got you to gotta build your own products. He, he's figured that out early on, very early on, right? Um, but kudos to him. Uh, takes a lot of effort. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah. Hmm. What do you think, James? If you were if you were in a uh, Mushfiq's position, you have a juicy list of uh, and high open rates on a weekly newsletter. What would you do, dude? I don't even know. I'd just promote Thrivecart, man. Thrivecart does mad CPAs. <laughs> that's um, that, that's as far as I've got in that niche, man. Yeah, like, I know, as you mentioned, it's the same people, you know. Other than starting a new newsletter, like Jackie was saying. Yeah, that's something I haven't done and I won't. It's um, put affiliate products in my newsletter, even though payouts are high. I've just day one never done that. I think it takes away from the credibility. Mm -hmm. um, if an advertiser pays for it, that's different. Um, but if I am promoting it for the commissions, that's very different. Um, something I won't do. Mm -hmm. I have do affiliate products. Do you take Go commissions ahead. even on sponsored post or they're paid to be sponsored no. in the YouTube? No, okay. No, just flat out um, X dollars. I don't care what product you are. If it fits, you know, I'll promote it. I don't care about the quality because I can, it's just an advertiser. You guys, mm -hmm. everybody who has display ads on their site, you, you don't have control of who you're mm -hmm. showing. So same concept on newsletters. Yeah, I was waiting for you to roast a Koala writer, man. Um, you needed to do like a thread just blasting <laughs> people on that. Um, we you weren't there yeah, in our yeah. like, time of need, man. We that's when we needed you the most for Mushfi to come on the scene. I was reading. Blast I was reading everything. I was reading everything on. So the, interestingly, this spawned out of John Dykstra's forum. I'm a member there. I have read everything there, and man, the I'm kind of uh, my stupid cat. I I saw the start of that. I know the person behind it, not personally, but I know who, who they are. Um, and then I saw all my favorite niche site people just shilling the shit out of this product. <laughs> and look, I'll be honest, I don't know why this happened. These people I respect. And they were doing that every single newsletter for a stupid ass software tool that's gonna go away. Um, and something well, else is going to 30 percent commissions right 30 percent recurring man i reach out to these same people promoting my product 30 percent 50 percent commission i get rejected and then this bullshit <laughs> away, right so it's like something something was not i i it didn't gel well with me and and you know i didn't get active on twitter about this stuff because the people behind it i respect i mean the people promoting it i don't want to out them right um or their names so um but anyway it was just a very it just felt very dirty to me, just in general. Um, I've never used a product, so I don't know if it's good. I'm, I'm, I know I read all the reviews and it, it, everybody really likes it. So probably the product is amazing. It's just the way the affiliate game was handled. It was, just didn't feel right to me. That's all. Yeah. And um, like, like a friend of mine, uh, Vibov, who owns uh, Autoblogging, um, he's yeah. saying yeah. There, there was like a thread a couple of weeks ago I don't know if you saw it, that like a uh, guy on LinkedIn and Twitter, it went viral about how he grew, uh, I think, causal.app, the domain. Um, did you, do you guys remember that thread? Yeah. Um, and, like it, it blew up and he said ever since then, his MRR has like completely skyrocketed. Like everyone is into the content, AI content niche. So I'm, I'm, I'm actually very curious to see what like the numbers are behind, you know, these like popular AI tools like Koala, um, even his, his is in like the mid, I don't, I don't want to say it, but um, we're going to maybe talk about it offline, but like he is doing some serious numbers on just SaaS and he, he has right. like the nastiest website. 
it's honestly pathetic. I <laughs> like I shit on him every single day. I'm like, you gotta get that fixed. Cause if if you ever go on like these some of these tools website, it's just, like so poorly executed. It just hurts me. But um <laughs> anyways, yeah, I think it's uh it's like a gold rush in this space right now and everyone's getting into it. Everyone's using But surely AI it won't writers. last. Surely so those a lot of those tools are just surely a lot of those tools, like the AI writing tools are just gonna absolutely go bust in the next few months there's more and more uh, things come out with chat gpt and whatnot yeah i think 100 percent um they're gonna go bust but i don't, we don't know the timeline right so uh yeah. example with uh vibov the the guy from auto blogging um i told him that he should be selling because he was at like 15 20k mrr um i was like yo sell 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 this um it's peak like frenzy right now you'll get a great a multiple his books are all out, of, all, all out of whack. It's like disgusting. He probably needs a couple months to fix it up. He's like, nah, man, I'm going to hold on to it. It's just the beginning. And I mean, kudos no. to him. <laughs> he was right. He's popping off right now. But, you know, like if I if he did sell, he would miss this run up. But, you know, it's like peak frenzy right now. How long will it hold for? It's like it's like at the end of the dot com bubble. Um, most money was made near the end, right? So I guess like how long do people sh should they hold for? I think there's mm -hmm. other examples like the guy on Twitter who bought PDF.ai. Um yeah. great 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 idea. I think he bought it for like 20 30k. And then the next day ChatGPT yeah. fucking launches the exact same product as an app free app. Like what are you supposed to do about that, you know? Like Oh really? I, a... I thought I thought I thought he bought the GitHub like code, bought the domain and then now you're telling me chat GPT has a similar thing, right? I didn't know this yeah. third part. So that's the case. Yeah. Oh man. I saw his success. It happened in a very short period of time and now he's screwed. Right. But look, look, if you go on acquire.com, um, I kind of monitor that there's mm -hmm. an AI app every hour. Yeah. <laughs> People just Some share them out. AI tool every single hour. I mean, if you go to the SaaS section, it's all AI tools. And, and 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 everybody's just getting rid of them because of chat gpt plugins and and all the all the things they're launching right so it's going to be a graveyard yeah i think so yeah do you know one I'll, thing i've I'll noticed check. um for people who buy software companies like you gotta be careful uh they what they do what i've been seeing on some listings is they do lifetime deals and then they report that as like trailing 12 month revenue yeah well absolute savage yeah. like how can that be allowed yeah. like that's easily one-time fee yeah. you know yeah. how can you call that mrr yeah. Yeah. that's disgusting man um i i see that so often yeah. but and you see that with a lot of writers i'm pretty sure that's what uh koala writer is gonna like i'm sure they popped up already in uh some of these um sites because koala writer is a lifetime deal as well right i believe yes yeah yeah it is it is it is yeah. so like how do they how does the economics work of it i'm sure no one doesn't they don't have an analyst on board where they crunch numbers like okay um if you assume a certain user only uses x amount you know over the course of two years maybe it'll be worth it but it's like upfront money and you have to right i don't know because these credits aren't free right these uh open AI no. well they have APR they have called, subscriptions right? too i think the lifetime deal was only in the beginning i think oh and now it's all subscription based but that but what Jackie is saying, the new buyer is going to get this, you know, big amount of lifetime customers. And then the yeah. new buyer has, has to service that customer over their lifetime and that cuts into their costs. So I think yeah. when selling those things, a, a savvy buyer will say, what is the cost of goods for this lifetime customer? You need to give me that as a percentage, maybe 80%, 60%, 50% off the purchase price or something so i can service these customers and then i'll pay you a multiple on that and then i'll pay you a multiple on the mrr that's the subscription revenue um mm. that's the only way to make that work um, for software products yeah interesting space though i've always wanted to get into it but like you see jasper i'm sure they have so much pressure from like shareholders you got copy ai getting clapped dude it's like the great clapping it's so nice to see um people who were like cocky <laughs> during covid raised like billions of dollars in v venture capital oh boy right this place is gonna be, right. yeah it's gonna be so gnarly and like the founders are gonna leave with nothing because they have like there's like a preference uh was it uh, uh yeah. liquidation preference right 
they're they're going right. everyone gets zero except for the VCs. Maybe they get paid out. But yeah, it's uh yeah, yeah, yeah. it's an interesting time. Are you you're you're you're, 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 you're you're um how are your main brands doing by the way? How's like website flip revenues are they staying steady um because you mentioned uh like a dip in valuations or interest in the space right dip in valuations uh wait uh let me say uh dip not the multiples haven't decreased which is it, it always lags right i'm feeling that there is a less interest in the last two months um websites i knew that if i listed a uh, last year would sell in 48 hours have not moved. Um, and these are not bad sites, right? These are sites in my portfolio, they're growing month over month. People are just not buying, um, you know, probably a liquidity issue, as you said, we talked about this privately. Um, so the multiples have not adjusted to count for that. So that's one issue. Um, yeah, people aren't buying, that's another issue. So overall, you know, my newsletter, is still churning along, but it's not doing what it was, um, maybe like mm -hmm. up till end of last year. So, yeah, there's a downtrend coming. I mean, down, downtrend happening in, in my industry right now. Um, I think people are just scared with the AI stuff, with Google um, Bard and all of that stuff. Uh, yeah, so people aren't buying as much. Good for buyers though, right? If you're looking for sites now. The thing, yes, I, I, I yes. But the thing is that the sellers, like myself, are still stubborn <laughs> at the typical multiple. <laughs> right yeah. like for me like for example i was saying i have a relationship site 120,000 page views you know it makes like 900 a thousand bucks i listed that for 32,000 i knew i know just based on my experience that should have flown off the shelf um yeah. even earlier this year that's there's no brainer it's like it's like a curve like this there's nothing wrong with it well done site it hasn't gone but I, it doesn't make sense for me to bring that multiple down from whatever 37 X or something to like 30 X just to get the sale, because I feel like I can just grow it and make that money back. So there is a point where it doesn't make sense for me to flip, um, unless I see something really bad with the site, right? I'm just trying to get rid of it. That's, I don't like to do that in general, but for this one, it doesn't make sense to me. If it's growing like this, I can just keep growing it. Right. Um, so that's also going to cause issues. Like some people are going to say, Hey, I built my business model on a 40 X multiple, right? As in I'm investing, there's a group of people, a lot of people who are building sites and know that a 40 X multiple is waiting for them on the other end. Right. And then they're going to get hit with reality that no, it's probably like a 30 X multiple where you can exit and the economics there don't make sense anymore to sell. Hmm. I, I know your idea. Um, like your feeling of uh, being stubborn and not selling at a lower valuation. But I mean, I think there's like the, the, the famous thing was like the price of yes, price yesterday is not the price today. And um, yeah. I think this revaluation obviously takes into interest rate into account. Um, sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I would argue that I would still just dump it, man. If you, if you're in the, yeah. if you want to sell it, I would personally still dump it. Um, yeah. And, yeah. 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 For this I one was... specifically, I listed on Flippa just to get an auction going um, because it was not moving um, through my, through my network. So it's on Flippa. So no, I'm still selling. I, I, it's not that, but there are some sites and I know some people, not me specifically, who bought at a specific multiple, right? And now they're having to sell at a lower multiple. So it sucks for them. Right. Um, so hopefully they grew the site, but you know, if they're doing a quick flip, that doesn't work anymore. Um, you gotta, you gotta stay in it a little bit long term and you know, build out a real site. So, yeah. And, um, you, you've been, you've been like, well, last time we spoke and the times we've spoken in the past, you, you, your whole time isn't very long, right? Have you like extended that now with the valuation structure? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It used to be like three to six months. I feel like now it's going to be like nine to 12 months um, re in reality. Um, that should be okay. Yeah. Honestly, if, with your, yeah, you're, you're okay. generating revenue, right? Yeah. And yeah. buying at a yeah. three year payback period, I think you'll, you'll, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I buy it lower than that. So I'm fine. I, there's nothing wrong personally with me. I just, I, I, you know, I, I hear from a lot of people and most people don't have access to the deal flow that 
the two of us have, Jackie, you and I. So uh, yeah. most people are buying for marketplaces and brokerages, right? Um, and those are already at a premium. Inflated, so yeah. it, they're very inflated and um, it's going to take time for the brokerages to drop um, the multiples. Um, so that hopefully happens in the next few months. Yeah. Yeah. I get man, dude, quick shout out to Mike from niche twins who absolutely made out like a bandit with his exit. Huh? That was, that was the craziest exit. Good for yeah. him. man. Good for him. Holy shit. Good for him. For Good sure. For him. Yeah. For I sure. think, um, we'll, we'll see what, what the niche side industry has to offer in the next couple months. Dude, you, you, you're, you're, you're neutral. How, 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 how is it possible that you use AI tools every day? And you still feel neutral about this space. Not, no, not no, even no. leaning anywhere. You're like Switzerland right now, right? You're like, I am good. How is that even possible? Yes, I guess I should say I'm neutral for using AI for bulk content, but I am okay. um, very bullish for using AI for everything else. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah. that's, that's it. That's actually what it, my stance is. Um, and that might change, but I don't know. I, I feel like this AI for content, it's just, it's again, a cycle you, you get, I, people used to be producing like 10 articles a month and now they're putting like 200 articles a month. I mean, wh how, what the hell? Um, there is a, there's a, it just doesn't make mathematical sense to me how one day, you know, Google's going to just value that content because all of a sudden you're from 10 to 200 and there's no expertise. Right. So I, I don't know. I, I don't, it's hard for me to say because there's a very strong group of people that say, no, AI content, human edited AI content is the best. Humans suck. We can't write. Yeah. There's that group. And then there's a group like me who are waiting and feeling things out and there's like no middle ground. And it's like a war between the two. <laughs> so yeah. uh, for me, I'm waiting. I'm, I'm waiting. I, I, I might do an experiment, um, but that, it, it won't be something I do. I, I, like I will never put AI content on the website flip.com. I will never do that. I, that just doesn't make sense to me. Um, so I might put it on my stupid relationship site just to test things out, but it's not going to be a change of SOPs for me. It's going to be like, what well, you know, a test. That's all. All right. And what do you, you know, like with search changing, you know, these new featured snippets, do not feel anything about that. You've seen those, right? The screenshots. Like the featured yeah. snippet is pre pretty much extended and it's like with yeah, media, yeah. with their like multiple links, bro, that, that featured snippet covers at least half the screen, if not more. That's, yeah. It's like, yo, if you're yeah. position one, yeah. you ain't getting I any know. clicks, man. I know. I know. I, I honestly, I, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. It, it sucks for all of us if, if that's <laughs> the case. Yeah, but there's no way, there's no way they've rolled that out into YMYL. Their liability would be huge. Surely you couldn't just give advice for someone's skin condition or something, or even fitness advice and someone gets injured. I think they can, they can have a disclaimer, dude. What do you mean? What do you mean? Uh, by what is it? They're, they're not going to get sued. Who's going to sue Google, bro? They're going to throw like an dude, army of lawyers at you and it's over. Dude, you don't think people get there just for settlements? Just if a whole bunch of people got together because this one piece of advice got them like cancer or some shit or like whatever else because of what they were what they're offering, or they're like you should treat this with essential oils, you know, some voodoo shit, and then they just get yeah. absolutely like smashed. This I can't I can't see how they would get away with like that doesn't make any sense. That just sounds like lawsuits, and then plus all the big media companies too that own like all like the, the first page of Google. You don't think they'll come back as well? against Google for something like that, because if they started losing a bunch of visitors and money because they were, Google's taking their content, surely there's got to be something. I mean, those media companies make bank. Yeah, they, they make bank, but it's not like the bank it's of, bank, but... it's not Google bank. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like the TAM there isn't like huge. Uh, I think in overall, I hear what you're saying. I think, uh, major mo most niches will probably be disrupted or like destroyed here they'll probably lose yeah. a ton of clicks um but i think uh, i'm i'm bullish on youtube right now i'm super bullish dude i'm gonna yeah. probably gonna 100 percent. yeah tr try to do more uh youtube content on like this uh the seo space and see what happens um just recently hired a like a couple two v8 uh video editor vas and they're just going through our um podcast cutting clips they know how to edit well as well 
man and they're like overall their their um the value they bring is incredible i don't know if you guys have like uh video editors but you know this there's like a mini movement i think i spoke about the about this last time but these like faceless youtube channels dude you just need one editor and you you're sorted you can voice over it if you don't uh, want to do that uh I, that's I, my I think plan I'm, yeah why don't you do it man it, it seems like it's okay. quite easy i'm gonna, just gotta I'm gonna expand it. horizontally because i've got I've got my main, one of my main channels was purely like strength conditioning for combat sports. Now I'm going to expand out. I'm going to have like an instructional technique channel. And then I'm going to have, ideally I want to do like a, a preview, I guess you could say sports betting channel, I guess that like covers the upcoming fights. And then sports like betting? Talk. Nice. Well, well, the idea would be, the idea would be, it would preview the upcoming fights with the matches and then show the odds. And be like, hey, this guy, you know, these are the odds. This is what, and then do a full analyst breakdown of what, you know, what do we think about is going to happen in that match? So it's almost mm -hmm. like a predictions preview show, but it has odds in it. So you can get sponsored by DraftKings and shit like that. And then do another one that would be more like fighter profiles. So it'd be like, you know, those yeah. highlight clips with voiceovers and stuff like that. But obviously there's um, copyright you got to get around, which is a, another mission in itself. Yeah, that's a... Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, Mushik, you're not yeah. still not doing any video, right? No. Dude, this this guy, uh, man, you've waited too long for video. That shit's like ship has sailed. Like we're we're ship has sailed and more. Like we're we're already in America, bro. You're you're still back in England. What the hell well, is this? I know. I am. I'm weird. I know. I know. <laughs> well, at it's least you late. know with the. At least you won't be fully clapped if uh, this whole search thing changes because you, you now have a seven-figure DDC brand. That's pretty exciting. And, um, yeah, I think... Yeah, I'll, no, website flip will be fine if, if for example, Google, Google like, does something. Uh, that's The newsletter is, that's that's the moat, right? There is always something I can do um, in that space. Um, but, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I got I gotta do videos. Some people have approached me and said, "Hey, I'll take all your content and make videos out of them or something." I I, I don't know, I don't know how to trust these people. So, um, yeah, we'll see, we'll see. All right, well, I think that's it, man, dude. I think we can yeah. wrap up. I uh, appreciate your time today. Yes, um, let's do that. Yo, where can people find you on uh, Twitter? What's your at? Is it? plug your all your stuff Twitter shit. is at the website yeah at the website flip um and then the website flip dot com. That's it. Perfect. That's the pod guys. Thanks. Cool. All right.